<laughs> it would be a wolf's fun, eh? On goes full. People might yet win it here for Wolves. Flash in the shot. What a goal! Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest Wolves Fancast preview episode. It's your host, Little Dan. And with me tonight, I've got with me Liverpool supporter, singer, songwriter, all around good lad, Jamie Webster. How's it going, Jamie? What's happening, Dan? I'm all good, mate. Nice one for having me on, fella. No, great. Great to have you on. Obviously, in the middle of your, your latest tour at the moment, playing Dirty Leeds this evening. How's the tour gone so far? <laughs> yeah, it's been great, mate. Uh, started off in Glasgow. Uh, they went around the bend. Uh, moved down to As they do. Last As they do. Yeah, then Newcastle was cool last night, and so now I've got Leeds today. Um, really looking forward to it, to be honest. It's been a good start up north in the tour. Um, crowds have been amazing. Uh, just amazing. Finally, great to finally see all those people singing back all of the words to the album. Uh, for, for the people who aren't aware of you, especially the, the Wolves contingent, <laughs> where's your journey come from to be where you are today? Obviously, I know you from sort of the the, the Liverpool chants. You you singing all those songs to those Liverpool fans at the Champions League final in Madrid and a few other bits and pieces. Just tell them about your journey so far. Yeah, so I started. Well, I was I've always been in bands and playing cover gigs since I was about fifteen, sixteen, and um, yeah, just it developed into doing this now. It just developed into you know Liverpool Football Club getting hold of me asking me to do a few of their events around some of the big games and then taking me out on tour um, to America and stuff like that. And it got, it got a name for myself. And all the while, I've been writing and releasing my own music. So um, it was just a case of getting it, you know, getting it done, really. Um, get, get, getting it released now that I have the platform. And thankfully, it took me to selling out venues with thousands of people up and down the country. So I'm just... Do you want to yeah, tell, yeah, pe- just, you want to tell people about, yeah, obviously... obviously you- you um your YouTube channel released North End Kid, the official video yesterday. Do you want to give people a bit of a rundown on that? Yeah, my latest single, North End Kid. It's a uh, it's about not not giving up on your dreams and and not being, you know, defined by your environment and your the people around you. You know, do what you want and make your own way and walk your own path and don't end up like the North End Kid. That's the sort of message of the song. And um, yeah, I'm just really really happy with how it's gone down everyone seems to take to it really well sang it in newcastle last night and you know the crowds were singing everywhere back to me it's only been out less than a week so that was well a week today actually so that was a pretty nice coincidence do you know what i mean fantastic i just and then, uh, in the car earlier it's right right up my street um i don't want to sort of pigeonhole you but sort of uh scouse jerry cinnamon for me i don't know whether that's a, a compliment or not to yourself but Acoustic, mm. got a strong voice, that's, nice melody. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind about it, but you'll have to ask Jerry how he feels about that uh, comparison. To be honest, I don't think he'd be too happy with it. But because um, I don't think he's my biggest fan, Dan. But uh, oh, is he not? I'll, I'll have to, um, I have to put a charity boxing match on then. Yeah, well, I'll fucking batter him. To be fair, but <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. It's one of them. I'm doing my own thing. Jerry's doing his thing. Do you know what I mean? But I'm I'm walking my line. I uh, I play with other musicians on stage. I play with the band. It's you know it's a little bit different to Jerry, but I can see why a lot of people make the comparison. I, I, I think it's hard. it's the I think it's the bond that you both build with a crowd. To be honest, Jamie, I think yeah. No, I'm only you I'm only you you, you like both could you 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 both could stand with an acoustic guitar in front of two people or twenty fans and our stuff, and you'd get the same reaction. Yeah. Thanks very much, mate. But yeah, like I say, I was a big fan of Jerry's music um, until I found out he wasn't a fan of mine. Um, and then, yeah, just like I say, it's just nice to be able to write from the art and have people connect with it. You know what I mean? That's the mate. That's what I'm doing it for. I'm writing my story, writing my views on the world and what I see and things that have happened to me and people around me. And I'm just really lucky that so many people across the country seem to relate to to what I'm saying and want to come down and see me and be part of the movement, you know what I mean? I'm just really yeah. grateful to all those people. 
really enjoying it. Obviously, your album's out in uh, January, uh, titled Moments. Uh, but let's get back to the football, shall we? Uh, obviously, you've had a good few years following Liverpool. Another big win last night. Nothing better than beating your local rivals, is it? Obviously, last night, 4-1 away at Everton. Uh, Jordan Henderson, two most Salah goals. And obviously, a Wolves fan favourite, Wolves fan villain. Diago Jota getting the fourth. What was your sort of thoughts on that? Um, to be honest, it was just... I mean, I was on stage for the second half. So, it was... It was you know, just sort of... just As long as we win, I was thinking, just don't add to me, me pre-stage nerve sort of thing, do you know what I mean? But uh, it was nice coming off and seeing the results. And then, obviously, having a look at the highlights last night. Quietly in bed because the guitarist he plays with me, who I'm sharing a room with, he's an Everton fan, so I have to be a oh, little dear. bit sensitive towards his feelings. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a great result, mate. And I mean, I think everyone foreseen it based on the form and that, but as you know, form goes out the window in derby games. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just one of them. Do you know what I mean? Just really happy we got it over the line. Um, you know, Salah's on fire. Nice to see Henderson with the goal and an assist. Nice to see Andy Robertson back in, back doing what he does best. And obviously, Diogo Jota has been a unbelievable signing, really. I think, you know, if you look at his um, record against the goals ratio, it's, it's quite phenomenal, to be fair. Yeah, I think there would have been a few Liverpool fans who, who raised their eyebrows when the uh, transfer fee of £45 million pound was reported, but... We all knew at Molyneux what sort of player he was and the capabilities that he had. And the age that he's still got in his favour, he's going to be an absolute elite level striker once he, he properly kicks into gear because I still think he's learning his trade to a degree. Um, obviously, 1-4-1 last night, uh, third in the league, scored, I think it's over two two or more goals in the last 19 consecutive games. I mean, Liverpool literally are a, a machine at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I mean... It's always this period on the clock. We always do really well. And it's 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 nice to see that we're continuing that sort of seasonally run. Um yeah, we you know, it's gonna be a tough, tough battle with City and Chelsea. Um right till the end, I think. But, you know, we're in a good place. I think that the lads seem happy, they seem like they're playing for each other. You know, the dressing room's always good when you're taking clubs at the head of it. And yeah, it's a good time. It's a good, it's an exciting time to be a Liverpool fan. You know, if we can build on what we've done in the past couple of years, um, you know, it's going to set the, the club in good stead for when you know that eventual day comes when Jurgen decides that you know he's finished with with us. Um, you know, if we've got a big reputation and a big haul of trophies by the time he leaves, there'll be plenty of managers looking to come in and head at that squad, and plenty of big players who are still looking to come and play for us. So yeah, I mean. I'm just happy with the way things are going. Uh, you know, Jürgen's a good man, great manager, and we're in great shape. And yeah, the fans seem happy. So yeah, I'm obviously a fan, so I'm happy. Obviously, probably your uh, biggest game of the season so far this coming Saturday, in my opinion. Away at Wolves, a uh, big game for obviously both sides. Um, yeah. but Liverpool have got an absolutely ridiculous record, not just against Wolves, but against most teams. But Wolves have only beat Liverpool once in the Premier League, which I think was going back to something like 2010 or 2011, which got Roy Hodgson the sack. Yeah, I was and we've absolutely game. been, yeah, we've been pretty much battered since then. Um, what's Is your sort Ward of thoughts on that game? S- Stephen Ward, yeah, um, obviously yeah, underneath yeah. the legs of uh, Pepe Reina. Liverpool were sort of in that transition of not really spending much money at the time, weren't they? And obviously you had players like Paul Koncheski and stuff, which not only not Paul Koncheski, but not Liverpool calibre player, is there? Um, what's your sort of thoughts no, going into the game on Saturday? Not. Do you think d- difficult game or comfortable for Liverpool? Do you know, despite the despite the, uh, the the record stating there, every time I've gone to Wolves, it's been quite a tough game. Um it's been, it's you know, it's been tricky. He's a good side. He's a, you know, he's, he's got a great, great atmosphere at the ground when, you know, when, when everyone's up for it, particularly every time I've been there, he's been right up for it. You know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's it's not an easy place to go. Um, and yeah, I'm, I genuinely don't look forward to these sorts of games, the likes of Wolves games and teams like that, because they're always games that you can come unstuck quite quickly because, 
if you are organised and you just, you know you just carry out your plan to stop us, you've got players that can devastate us on the counter attack. Do you know what I mean? And and you know it's nice to, it's nice to see for himself that you know uh, Raul is back now. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's nice to see Jimenez. Sorry, uh, it's nice to see him back and you know he's got his goal. You know he's got a couple now and it's nice to see him. You know back in the football after that horrible injury. So you know hopefully we can keep him quiet. And um, yeah, it's obviously just just weather. I think if we weather the storm and then you know try and get a couple of early goals, I think we'll be okay. But I think the longer the game goes on, where we don't score, I yeah, think that's obviously the crowd if, start. The, the crowd's belief starts to to, to grow. To, yeah, the, the crowd's belief is going to be um, a massive thing come Saturday. Obviously, last time out, uh, Liverpool got the win one 0 thanks to uh, Diago got a goal just before half time. But Wolves were unfortunate in the opening minutes not to get a penalty after Alisson had a bit of a clumsy uh, collision with Nelson Samedo. it be interesting yeah. to see um, what reception Diago Jota gets from Wolves fans on his return to Molyneux. Obviously, last season was played in, in lockdown. I think the fans um, understand how, how good a player he is, but uh, I think they're obviously disappointed to lose. But obviously, when a team like Liverpool come in for one of your players, it's really difficult to... Uh, Stopping from going, uh, we'll have a look at the likely lineups. These were the lineups from uh, last night's game. Obviously, Liverpool started uh, up front with um, Mane, uh, Jota, and Mousala. Um, I think one of the, the key duels on Saturday will be um, Mousala versus our left back uh, Ryan Aitnori. Obviously, he's a, he's only nineteen years old. Ryan Aitnori got a lot of um, potential, a lot of really good going forward, but still a bit untested defensively. Where's your sort of um, where you where you pinpointing that the key battles are yourself, Jamie? There, I always think most games are won in midfield, personally. Yeah. Um. So, I think you know if Thiago's on form and he gets and he can find the space, I think that that's going to be the key into him bringing the front three into the game. You know what I mean? And obviously, the full backs. You know, it's not only Salah that you've got to worry about coming coming up the, the right hand side. You've also got Trent Alexander Arnold and Jordan Anderson yeah. in a sort of three pronged attack. And that's uh, so you know, it's whether I think that's going to be the that's obviously down down the wings and put in the centre there. You just I just think if Thiago gets the space and Fabinho does the dirty work well, I think it's. Yeah, I think your volume um, or audio has gone a bit um, fuzzy there, Jamie. I'll just, I'll just go. I'll try and wing it while we try and get you back. Um, Wolves uh, were without Ruben Evers in last night's nil-nil draw. Um, hopefully, he'll be back last night. Uh, let us know in the sort of comments whether you think. Um, Never's come straight back in, uh, and whether Adama plays uh, again. Obviously, Adama had a big chance in in the first half, but his decision making at times last night was probably the reason why Barcelona let him go. And he's um he's still at Wolves. Uh, getting Ruben Neves back should be key to Wolves having any chance of getting a good result uh, in this game. Um, anyone that you think could be rested from Liverpool, Jamie? No, because he's having uh, internet connections up in Yorkshire this evening. Uh, Sanders, Wolves, obviously, in the comments section. At least Nevers is back, but expect a Liverpool win. Uh, Statman Stubbs football. Uh, evening, guys. And uh, the legend that is Jamie Webster. I'd love to have Jamie on my show whenever he is free. While we're um, trying to get Jamie back, just letting you know that this episode is in... Um, being brought to you by Pro Prep UK, and they are an educational tool. So, if you're a parent or a student, uh, we've got an exclusive offer from our friends at Pro Prep. This is the perfect study tool for university students undertaking science, technology, engineering, or maths related modules. It can halve your study time. Pro Prep provides bite sized videos relevant to the module, of course, which can be accessed from any device at any time. Um, so, obviously, we've got an uh, offer on at the moment. If you visit proprep.uk backslash football you get a 30-day free trial 
And then obviously we'll go to one of our guests, uh, Jamie, if we can get him back on now. Are you there, Jamie? I think your microphone is on, is, is muted, Jamie. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, but it's uh, very echoey, yeah. I'm not sure what happened from the first time you were on. It's like you're, you're you're very distant now, like Wolves are to Liverpool in the league. About ten points, I think it is. Yeah, we're having uh, connection problems with uh, Jamie folks. Sorry about that. Um, just crying. Let's see if I can bring anything to you in the meantime. Wolves have um, had a few transfer links to Liverpool in. In recent periods, they've, they've not only been linked to Adama Traore for the last sort of two years. They've been linked to Huang in the uh, the last couple of months. I'm not sure what you guys' thoughts are in regards to whether Huang could be poached either in January or or the summer. I think it's very difficult for Wolves to let Huang go in January due to the transfer processes that would need to be activated in order for him to leave. So. I don't think he'll he'll leave, and I think Wolves will will buy him in the summer. Let me know what you think in in the comments section. Sanders Wolves says we need Neto back as soon as possible, and I don't think there's any Wolves fan in the world that doesn't agree with that. For um, showed last night in regards to um, how we struggled to break Burnley down. That as good as Adama is, and uh, we, we we're missing Powdance. Trinkhouse is still struggling to prove his um his agent right for getting him this move towards at the moment. He's got the highest nutmegs in the league, I think, at the moment, but from an assist shot uh, goal accuracy, he's, he's not hit the hit the mark in the Premier League for Wolves yet. So it is key that we get Neto back as soon as possible without putting him under the um the strain of being rushed back too soon. If there's anybody in the comments section would like to have a little bit of a conversation with me while we try and get Jamie back, it would be mostly, mostly appreciated. Let me just, just bear with me. You know, thanks to everyone that continues to to uh, support the Wolves fancast. Uh, we've got uh, 20 days of fancast on our socials at the moment, which we're giving away a Wolves themed prize uh, every day uh, for the first 20 days of December. We've gone for 20 just so we can make sure we get all the prizes out in time before Christmas. Uh, yesterday, we gave away a Wolves-themed Christmas jumper, which was won by a Matthew Howe on Twitter. Um, today's novelty-themed prize is a um, Wolves uh, badge with an image of a Wolves fan uh, defecating on a West Brom shirt, which I'm sure all you Wolves fans out there would enjoy to the most and wear with such pride. Uh British Aviator has commented, Bruno needs to be backed in January. Our bench yesterday was a joke. We don't need a whole team as we have the likes of Neto, etc. coming back. Quality over in, quality over quantity in January for me. And I, I totally agree with that British Aviator. I think we're, we're one or two players away from being a really solid side once we get the, once we get the likes of Podens, Neto, Johnny and Mosquera uh, fully fit. Bruno Jordão... Um, He's been featured for the under 23s in the last uh, couple of days, so hopefully it'll be more of a, a use once he's back to, to full fitness. I, I believe we could do with a centre midfielder that's box to box. That is a pretty much a bit of a jack of all trades. That then then just being a specialist like Nevers or Martinho who, who can keep the ball well with possession. Um, but I think but I think we've missed a box to box midfielder. I'm not saying we need him now, but a box to box midfielder like Alfred Undoy. Um we've 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 just missed that physicality in midfield since returning to the Premier League and a midfielder who can drive into the box um late and get on the end of crosses. We'll go to a quick 
commercial break and hopefully we'll get Jamie back on. Hi everyone, Matt from Wolves Fancast here. If you're anything like me, time is of the essence these days. How am I meant to take training with my wonder kids on the managerial football simulation game that I'm not allowed to mention for legal reasons if I'm too busy worrying about my online media presence? Well, that's where our friends at pixelyetimedia.com come in. They're not just web designers, they're a creative agency that cover all of your design needs from websites, brochures and signage to marketing, logo design and branding. So go check them out at pixelyetimedia.com media.com they'll get you set up quicker than a dharma Traore running at a terrified left back speaking of which who's got my baby oil welcome back everyone as always thank you for supporting the walls fan cast a part of the 90 minute network this episode is brought to you by pro prep uk Let's go back to uh, the head-to-head. -head. Obviously, we've played Liverpool 14 times in the Premier League. We've only got the one victory against them coming uh, back in the early uh, 2010s with a 1-0 win thanks to a Stephen Ward goal. Um, we've had some really unlucky games against Liverpool in recent times. The um, the defeat away at Liverpool a couple of years ago where Pedro Neto scored and a ridiculous VAR decision cost us that night from getting back into the game and maybe going on to to get a result we've gave liverpool uh, a strong strong performance the last two times that they've come to my new last season they uh they ran out one nil winners thanks to a diogo jota goal and i think the season before we lost 2-1 we were him and us uh, scored that banger of a header from adama Traore cross and i think uh roberto firmino got the late winner in the end uh, Sanders Wolf says we need a centre midfielder. Agree. Renato Sanchez would be the one. Totally agree. Um, it's just whether we can get Renato Sanchez now. There's, there's been a lot of things that have come out in social media in the last couple of weeks which suggests that he's got a higher calibre clubs trying to get hold of his signature uh, come January. So it all depends on how much Jorge Mendes can pull some strings who you might have to kidnap a couple of people in order to, to get that move through walls. Obviously last season, Diogo Jota got the, the, the goal that uh, took the three points back to Merseyside. Uh, Jamie Carragher was on uh, Sky Sports after the game and he was pretty much adamant that uh, Wolves should have had a penalty in the opening two minutes. Uh, the ball came in from, I think it was Adama and Alisson collects the ball drops it and then just completely just runs and clatters into Samado. And I think what what was the most ridiculous thing that that was VAR looked into it and didn't believe it was a penalty. And I think if you if you go back out there tonight, guys, and uh, view that that incident, it's absolutely ridiculous that it didn't get given. And it, obviously Liverpool may, may still have gone on to win that game comfortably, but Wolves winning 1-0 or any team in the Premier League winning 1-0 at home. I've got something to fight for. We could have actually gone on to get a result. Who knows? Um, yeah, Sanders, Wolves, that 2-1 that at home defeat was painful. I remember the atmosphere that night being really, really classic. Uh, classic Molyneux, good atmosphere. Um, just a shame that we couldn't get the get a result on the night. If you have a look at the likely lineups again, um, I, I still think... Um, Mousala coming up against Ryan Eight Nori will be massive because I think if Ryan Eight Nori gets caught out in in Liverpool's final third and uh, Raman Saez is exposed next to Salah and Trent Alexander, it's it's going to be difficult to keep them out. Obviously, I mentioned earlier they've scored uh, two or more goals in their last uh, nineteen consecutive games, so they're an unbelievable side at the moment. But if you look at the uh, the the league table from last night, they're third in the league, Liverpool, behind Man City and Chelsea, which we've also got coming up uh, soon. So it's going to be a difficult month for for Wolves, which was quite disappointing. Looking back on last night's nil nil at home to Burnley, because it would have given us a bit more of a a cushion. Obviously, the the two point. If we would have got a win last night, I think we might have uh, snuck above Arsenal on goal if I'm not hundred percent sure. That you have to uh, let me know, guys. Right, let's have a look at the um so bear with me guys, really struggling with, with Jamie up in, in Leeds tonight. 
If anyone is in the comment section, I had a quiz uh, prepared for Jamie. If anyone can tell me the answers to the, the questions that are about to come up, if you uh, give us a nod on uh, our Twitter page in the DMs later on, we'll try and give you a, a prize. So the first one is name the footballer and name the fighter. So it's a footballer for Wolves and a UFC fighter. It's quite an easy one. This is Wolves player and a UFC fighter. Anyone in the comments section? Anyone at all? I might have to get try and get Barry Douglas on because it's, it's going along them lines again. Are you there, Barry? You can't fool me tonight. I'm trying to make it work. Anyone in the comments section? The correct answer is Connor Cody and Connor McGregor as guest right by British Aviator. As I said, it was an easy one, that one. Uh, fingers on your keypads, ready for the next one. It is name the character and name the footballer. It's a Liverpool theme show, so think carefully about who the footballer is and who the uh, movie character is. Quite a difficult one if you if you're a young Wolves fan. Midfield that used to play for Wolves and a movie character. Anyone in the comment section get it before I move on to the next one? I'm expecting British Aviator to come in with a correct answer, Gren. Or Sanders Wolves. British Aviator has got the movie character which is Harry Potter. So if there's any Wolves fans in the comments section that know a Wolves player with the surname Potter, the correct answer was Darren Potter and Harry Potter. Quite a difficult one if you're a relatively young Wolves fan or just don't remember Darren Potter because he was a bit of a bit part player. I think he was actually captain under Mick McCarthy in his first season at Wolves. And the last one, which was purely for... Uh, Jamie, which is a pretty much a, it's a difficult one, unless you're a Liverpool fan or a big music mu music fan. It's name the singer and name the Liverpool player. It's a bit of a difficult one, this one. Lead singer of a '90s indie band and a Liverpool player, which have got sort of similar names to the singer and the footballer. That's a good foul shot by me. I'm taking that. It is the lead singer of the Lars uh, Edward Atkins in the in the comments. Uh, hopefully, there's someone else who knows who the other player is. The the actual musician is uh, Lee Mavers from the Lars. If you if you're aware of the Lars classic '90s indie band uh, songs like "There She Goes" and "Son of a Gun," which is a a favourite of mine. The correct answer was. Um, Ed Maver, sorry, Lee Mavis from the Lars and Adam Lalana. Obviously, uh, Jamie was our guest on the show tonight and he's uh, currently on tour. He's playing Birmingham Academy 2 on Saturday, which suggests that he may he may be in Wolverhampton for the Liverpool game on Saturday if he, if he has time. And then over to Birmingham in the evening, that gig is sold out, but he's on tour for the rest of December and January. And his album, uh, Moments, is out in uh, January, which is the 28th of January. And his latest single, North End Kid, is out on his YouTube channel at the moment. Let's play it out. Tommy's from the city, he lives in a north end terraced house Near the council estate, he makes windows and doors And all his friends and means to end, so how he often thinks of getting out Like his mother did near 18 years before Boy's got a vision of going on a mission to the USA 
He wants to sing and dance and act on those Broadway shows If he should speak away in the Venice save you for another day For the nothing kid like him, that's how it goes He goes upstairs and takes his medicine Goes to heaven in his head and shuts his eyes When he sees the sunshine on his face Sees the wind as a completely different place Where he can find himself a lover And have a kid to his face With his music in the streets The crowds are throwing roses at his feet And then he pulls away the covers And ready for another couple days In the real world struggling to make ends meet From those lethal blows he took If he's to go out at night He'll get caught in a fight In a bar sometimes Another no thank kid Another shit out of luck Then he goes home And takes that medicine Goes to heaven In his head And shuts his eyes When he sees the sunshine on his face Sees the wind as a completely different place Where he can find himself a lover And have a kid to his face Where there's music in the streets The crowds are throwing roses at his feet And then he pulls away the covers and ready for another couple days In the real world struggling to make ends meet Make ends meet.